one eyewitness news tonight with dick north good evening i'm dick north United Airlines 727 jet carrying 88 persons exploded and broke in half tonight when it crash landed at Salt Lake Municipal Airport. This is Dick Norris for KSL News in Da Nang, South Vietnam. The LDS Church announced today that blacks may be admitted to the Mormon priesthood. Our worst case scenario is now a reality. It's a day of death, terror, and uncertainty. Elizabeth's heart is alive, well, and after nine months, finally reunited with her family tonight. I'm still out of breath from all I that, Dee Live from KSL Broadcast House in Salt Lake City, welcome to a special evening celebrating 43 years of broadcasting history. Tonight, it's Farewell, Dick Norris. Here are your hosts, Bruce Lindsay and Nadine Wimmer. Good evening. Tonight is a celebration of a legendary career. Dick Norse has been the voice of authority for three generations. We believe it's the longest tenure for any newscaster in America. Over the next half hour, we will share memories and behind the scenes stories of what it's been like to work beside Dick. We'll have, even have a special tribute from the White House. But before we focus on the end of Dick's 43 year career, let's take a look back at the beginning. The beginning when a 23-year-old kid from Colorado drove to Salt Lake and decided to take a wild chance, decided to look for a job in television. That was early 1964. I had a brand new 63 Corvair. That was the car I drove to Salt Lake to uh, start my search for what I wanted to do. On that Corvair's radio, the hit song was My Guy. Neither the kid nor anybody else dreamed that he would be our guy through eight presidents, through putting a man on the moon, through thick and through thin. Gasoline for that Corvair was 30 cents a gallon. Average income in 64, 6,000 a year. And the hit show on KSL, I'm Mr. Red, starred a talking horse. The TV news landscape was primitive, too. And here's your Utoko newscaster, Doug Mitchell. Good evening. In 64, Utah's three commercial TV stations were all lined up on Social Hall Avenue. This old street is just, it has a lot of fond memories. Dick Norse, the kid, swallowed hard and found a place to park his Corvair. Stop then, Channel 2. You're Greenhorn. Come back in five years, see us. We don't need to talk to you today. You have nothing for you. Went down to Channel 4 the next day. Same thing. Before the week was out, I was right here behind you at KSL doing an audition and was hired within two or three days from that. KSL soon enticed a weatherman and a sports guy to cross the street and join him. With Norse at the center, the chemistry clicked. He managed to balance the role of journalist in the mode of Cronkite, his hero, with on-air joking around with his pals. Dick paired the timing of a great comedian with that voice that could shake the earth. So when we had to hear bad news, we just felt better hearing it from Dick. The world has changed since 64, and so has Dick, but he has remained a steady presence in our lives. He's been our guy for a long time. Tonight, Dick, we celebrate your extraordinary career and the connection you've made with so many people it's, over 43 thank you, years. Thank you. It's, uh, I, I, I can't find the words to express it all. It's, we'll get to it's it. Great. Thanks. And now, two of Dick's co-anchors during his legendary career, Carol Makita with Ruth Todd. Richard, I speak for both of us when I say it's always been an honor. Thank you so much for your support, your kindness, and the friendship that will go forward. Ruth, tell us about thoughts on Dick. Well, there are so many. You know, I was here at KSL for a decade and sat by Dick many of those years and got to know him really, really well, as you know. And one of the things that I will always remember about Dick is his singing. He would come in after dinner break and he would always have a song on his lips. You know, he would, he knows every word to every country western song ever written, and I'm not kidding you. And then he also knows all the Broadway show tunes. And he's good at them. He's got that wonderful baritone voice and he would come in singing. 
And by the time he got over to our desks, we would all be singing with him the last few bars, whatever words we knew. And then we'd all have a big chuckle at the end. But then he would lean over to my desk and he'd say in his voice, Ruthie, when I'm done with this news business, you and I are taking our singing show on the road. So I guess my question to Dick is when's our first gig, my friend? Yeah? I really think he needs to go back to the stage because that's where he started. He, he did, and one yeah. other thing. It's something that not very many people know about Dick, and that is that one of the greatest things about him is his wife, Deb. She is the unsung wind beneath Dick's wings, and she is beautiful in and out and a dear friend. So Dick and Deb, to you both, I salute you, honor you this night. Congratulations on a wonderful career and wonderful friendships. We love you. Thank you. And this night would not be complete without Shelley Thomas, who was Dick's first female co-anchor. She couldn't be with us this evening, but I spoke with her by phone earlier this week, and she had this mes message for you, Dick. I remember you coming into work on the, on the worst days when you were battling yeah, cancer sure. and even had chemotherapy treatments in the morning. You came in and did two newscasts, so you can see why I'm a little mystified at the thought of you stepping away, but I know you won't be stepping away far. My 13 years anchoring with you and reporting at KSL were just fantastic, and one of the greatest memories of all my professional career will be um, the, the great relationship and the, the pleasant atmosphere that always existed there because of you. So, Dick, I'm thinking of you. I'm sorry I can't be there with you. And um, here's to another great 43 years in your next career. I love you, Dick. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the state of Utah, John Huntsman Jr., with a special proclamation. Dick, it's an honor to be with you and Deb and your wonderful family. There aren't a lot of great things a governor can do for you in this particular situation, my friend. But we can do a declaration, and that we have done. So on behalf of 2.7 of the great million of the greatest people on earth, many of whom are represented here tonight, let me just say this. Whereas Dick Norris is retiring after working as a newscaster in Utah for 43 years, anchoring more than 20,000 KSL newscasts and keeping viewers informed of changes in the world, whereas Dick is the longest serving news anchor in Utah history and one of the longest serving news anchors in U.S. history, Whereas Dick has donated countless hours of personal time to serve his community and assist those in need. Whereas Dick survived cancer on two occasions, sharing his battle against this dreadful disease with his audience as an advocate for cancer awareness. Whereas Dick is known for his tenacious energy, unswerving devotion to staying in peak physical condition in spite of his routine trips to Crown Burger for the occasional <laughs> milkshake fix. Whereas the news has changed over 43 years, but Dick's integrity, believability, hairstyle, and professionalism have remained constant in Utah news. Now, therefore, I, as governor of the greatest state in America, do hereby declare today, November 28, 2007, as Dick Norris Recognition Day. And it's an honor, Dick, to be able to do so. Thank you, Governor. For four decades, Dick has given us the good news and the bad news and the important news, always in a reassuring tone. In fact, much of our audience grew up watching him, and many of the people who work at KSL do so because of Dick's example. Now, a news anchor who knows what it's like to be retired offers this review of Dick's career. I'm Tom Broker, and I'd like to have been with you tonight, but I'm in a book sign. It is an honor for me to be part of Dick Norris's retirement party. As one television news anchor to another, I know just what you've been through, the highs, the lows, and mostly all that hard work and all the good times. As a young man in Grand Junction, Colorado, Dick had all the tools to be a great news anchor. The looks, the smarts, but mostly that voice. The earliest professional recording of Dick Norris's voice is when he was a teenager in Grand Junction. 
This is KREX Radio, serving western Colorado and eastern Utah, AM and FM in Grand Junction. That voice was bound to get him a job, and as Dick tells it, he stopped in Salt Lake City in early 1964 just to visit his brother on his way to a job in Sacramento. KSL offered him a job, and the rest is history. After a year of going solo, KSL lured weatherman Bob Welty and sportscaster Paul James over from Channel 4, and one of the longest-running, most popular anchor teams ever was born. The most looked forward to news program is the number one Channel 5 News with North, Welty, and James. In color, weeknights at 6 and 10 p.m., the number one reason more people turn to Broadcast House and Channel 5. Along with sharing the anchor desk with Welty and James, Dick is anchored with Bruce Lindsay, Shelley Thomas, Carol Makita, Ruth Todd, and now Nadine Wimmer. First Mark and now Kevin Eubank have handled 10 p.m. weather since Bob Welty retired, and sportscasters Jim Nance, Craig Bullerjack, and Tom Kirkland have anchored sports. News has always been the core of Dick's career, and over his 43 years at KSL, a conservative estimate is that he's anchored more than 20,000 newscasts. Have a good night. His first big story was a plane crash back on November 11, 1965. The United Airlines 727 jet carrying 88 persons exploded and broke in half tonight when it crash-landed at Salt Lake Municipal Airport. The jet was on a flight from New York City to San Francisco when it crashed in Salt Lake. The final death toll was 43. An investigation found the pilot descended too quickly. Another big story in Dick's early career was the story of the 1960s, the Vietnam War. This is Dick Norris, KSL News, aboard the USS Kitty Hawk, off the coast somewhere of Vietnam. It was 1967, still early in the war, and Dick tracked down Utah soldiers serving in Vietnam. This is Marine Lance Corporal Michael Totten from Murray, Utah. And uh, Mike, you're with the uh, 1st Marine Division located outside Da Nang here, right? Yes, sir. Dick Norris was the only Utah television reporter to go to Vietnam during the war. And in 1997, he went back. You know, when I left Vietnam in 1967, I had no idea I would ever return. Dick did return and was able to tie up some old loose ends, like what the Vietnamese people think of Americans and what he thinks of America's involvement there. Ted Bundy is labeled by law enforcers as one of the most vicious killers ever. The former University of Utah law student was accused of a string of murders across the United States, including one in Utah. He was finally charged with the deaths of two Florida State co-eds, and the trial took place in Miami. And on July 24th, the news came live via satellite from Florida. John Hollenhorst reporting live via satellite from Miami, Florida, where the verdict is in on the Ted Bundy murder trial. The former Utah law student was convicted tonight on all charges. The afternoon of April 20th, 1974, five people were in the hi-fi shop in Ogden when two armed robbers walked in and loaded a van with stereo equipment. What followed next ranks as one of the most savage crimes in Utah's history. There was the tragic and sensational murders of Mormon document forger turned bomber Mark Hoffman in October 1985. There was the case of polygamous fundamentalist John Singer, who got in trouble with the law for home teaching his children and vowed to go down shooting if anyone interfered. And because I have done no wrong, that's the reason I have the perfect right to defend myself and my family. Then on January 18th, 1979, as police attempted to arrest him, John Singer was shot in the back. Death was instant. Nine years later, Dick anchored several newscasts that were led by a story on a retaliatory attack by Singer's relatives. The Singer Swap clan bombed an LDS steakhouse near the Singer Ranch, holed up inside the ranch for 13 days, and killed a corrections officer in a shootout that ended the siege. In 1980, Dick found himself the subject of interest and compassion. He learned he had cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He had just gone home after three weeks in the hospital when his co-anchor at the time, Shelley Thomas, interviewed him. What are you feeling right now after what you've been through so far? Kind of what's going through your mind? I think you realize uh, the importance of life more than anything because it's it's scary, you know. Somebody says, uh, "Hey, you got you got cancer," and uh, I'm 40 years old, just turned 40. I'm still young yet. I still got a lot of things I want to do. 
so I just I think I just kind of sat back and evaluated my life and saying you know I've, I've got to lick this and I will I mean I, I can see me now out waging the cancer battle for other people and wage that battle for other people he did thank you for being a friend travel down a road and back again for 27 years he's thrown his heart and soul into the fight for a cure for cancer He's cheered up hundreds of people who have called him when they learned they had cancer. And Dick even wore those little yellow shorts on the newscast the night of that cancer run because a viewer promised to donate 50 more dollars to the American Cancer Society. <laughs> There's been plenty of clowning around during Dick's stay at KSL before there was Eyewitness News HD. I'm Dick Norris. And I'm Shelley Thomas. Some of the stories you'll see next on 3D Eyewitness News... There were even problems when the network anchor came to town. NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw is now on KSL. So, Tom, it's your <laughs> turn to talk. <laughs> KSL's promotion machine has been cranked up for all of Dick's career. Here now, a look back. Here he began his career. Good evening. I'm Dick Norris. And now, the Channel 5 Eyewitness News. The news specialist. <laughs> One thing about the news is there's plenty of it. It comes to you every day like a freight train. And here at Channel 5, we have a full-time news crew keeping you posted as to what happened and why. Learn what's going on through the high-caliber reporting of anchorman Dick Norris with concise news from at home and abroad, succinct news analysis, news exclusively designed for the people of Mountain America. Eyewitness News. It's more than our name. It's what we do. Dick Norris. Bob Welty and Paul James, outstanding in their field. Norse, Welty, and James, outstanding in somebody's field. <laughs> you have to know that that last promo, Outstanding in Somebody's Field, was Dick's all-time favorite. Partly because it was his idea, but mostly because it was so fun to make. And the audience got to know that Norris, Welty, and James had a great sense of humor. From KSL Sports Beat, Tom Kirkland with Paul James. PJ, the mark of a superstar in any business is making everyone around you better. You were great, but how did Dick make you better night in and night out? Oh, that's tough. All, all I can say is we had a lot of fun. We, we had an enormous amount of fun. And I thought I was coming down to his farewell tonight. And, and two days ago, I saw a picture that big of him in the paper. And yesterday, a picture in the paper. And I came down tonight, and there's a helicopter shooting up there. And there's lights going up in the air. And there's a limousine about two blocks long. And the senator's here, and the governor's here. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, my God, he's been elected president. <laughs> Bush, has, Bush has resigned. You know, my, my first impression of, of Dick was that Bob and I started television. We were the first guys on the air on Channel 4, and we were there for 14 years, and they finally talked us into coming over to Channel 5. They had just hired this snot-nosed kid out of southern Colorado, and, you know, I didn't know what he was going to be <laughs> like, and uh, he looked like Rudolph Valentino. Mm -hmm. And, wow. and then he started acting like Rudolph Valentino mm -hmm. and broadcasting like Rudolph Valentino. Yeah. And he still looks like Rudolph <laughs> Valentino. And you know what? He may yet get elected president, huh? Yeah. Hey, PJ, thank you very much. It's time now to bring in another high-profile member of our KSL sportscasting family, Craig Bowler. Jack Rose to start him, sitting next to Dick for 13 years. He can't be here tonight. He's calling the Jazz Sixers game in Philly. Jazz up 11 in case you care. But Bowler wanted to make sure he was involved in this great evening. Here's Bowler. Hey, Dick, it's Bowler. I want to congratulate you on 43 years of survival in this crazy television business that we're both in. I tell you what, it's, it's incredible. You are the Walter Cronkite of Salt Lake City. You are the Cal Ripken of broadcast television, the Iron Man. My 13 years alongside you were incredible. The Jazz were talking today to me and said, hey, when it's all said and done and you have some time to relax, they want to invite you and Deb to come to the Energy Solutions Arena. That's right. Larry wants to have you here for dinner and a game of your choice when time allows. So please come see us. And also, how many times did I say this? The play of the day? Well, I want to say it one more time to you, my friend. You, Dick Norris, just made the play of the day. Congratulations, and we'll see you at the arena very soon. <laughs> 
exciting. And here's your certificate to go to the jazz game. I, I'll take advantage of this one. <laughs> Retirement's going to be okay. <laughs> Shaping up nicely. Dick's known, as you know, for his charming smile, his suspenders, his cowboy boots, the pocket hanky, all of that. But he's as much known for his authoritative delivery of the day's headlines. We thought you'd enjoy this humorous take on Dick's long career from Utah songwriter Robert Lund. My name isn't Dick. It's Richard. I'm Dick Norris. Good evening. Dick Norris. Dick Norris. Whoa. Dick well, Norris. way back in the 60s, this newsboy newbie felt he Dick would look Norris. real good on TV with Paul James and Bob Welty. Dick Norris. Soon Utah got a hankering. Dick to see the Norseman anchoring. Moved here from Grand Junction, made the newscast function. Dick Norse. That's camera two, Mr. Norse. Dick if Norse. Dick were not an anchor, I swear this ain't a joke. He Dick would Norse. probably do more sailing or country karaoke. Dick Norse. He twice defeated cancer. Dick Norse. He's quite a two-step dancer. Delivers information on my favorite station, Dick Norse. He puts the top oh, in top so story. Dick Norse. He makes a lot of loot. Dick Norse. Spends it Dick all on cowboy Norse. boots. Dick Norse. He likes to play Dick the Norse. trumpet. Dick Norse. His wife Dick just hopes Norse. he'll dump it. Uh, Take it away, Richard. <laughs> That's enough. Dick In person, Norse. he's a sweet guy with such a friendly laugh. Dick but he's Norse. also got the muscles to tear you right in half. Dick Norse. A big time entertainer. Dick Norse. He's a Hall of Famer. Here at NBC, he is king of must see TV. Dick Norse. Wow, how much can that guy bench press? Dick I Norse. think of him retiring. And I'm so sad I'm sick. Dick I'll tune Norse. into the newscast, but now I won't get richer. Richard Norse. He cuts through the confusion. Dick Norse. He's an institution. Folks from Logan to La Burkin will miss seeing you working 43 years sure is nifty. Could you stick around for 50? Dick Norse. <laughs> So we've seen already how much Dick loves shiny cars. Yeah, especially black shiny cars. But we're going to talk to some gentlemen who have helped ruin more of those car washes over the years <laughs> from the Live 5 weather team. Len Randolph with Bob Welty. Oh, they're talking about Mr. Welty, the icon. Mr. Weather of Utah are sitting right next to me. Tell me about those, those days when Dick would ask you, Bob, I don't care. Can I wash my car? <laughs> yeah, I'd always tell him yes, and then he'd go out and get mud on it. But uh, that, that humor has come, uh, has gotten a lot better. I mean, we, we were a little lower class in those days. Paul and I would throw things back around. I don't know if I say it on the air, but I'd say things like, uh, like Paul James uh, folks uh, wouldn't let him play in the sand pile for fear the cats would cover him up. Oh, dear. Real, real high class. Uh. <laughs> now, when you did the bicycle commercial, yeah. uh, how'd you decide who was going to sit where? Oh, I can't remember, but I'm sure Dick had the seat. <laughs> that, that, uh, we saw that. We thought, well, okay. We Paul probably had the handlebar, and I had to straddle the bar. <laughs> That's why my voice isn't quite as deep as it used to be. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here tonight, Bob, for uh, you, honoring Dick and all the many years you guys worked together and made it a joy and a privilege for us to watch Channel 5. Do you know, I had 30 years with that guy and Paul, and they were marvelous years. I loved every minute of it. Went by quickly, didn't it? It did, didn't it? All right. You know what? Mark Eubank is another great, great weatherman in Utah weather history. Couldn't be here tonight, and it's time to travel in the world, and that's where he is on a plane right now, but he left this message for you, Dick. Richard, I sure miss working with you, buddy. You know, I was thinking, one of the things that makes you such a great newscaster is for, for 43 years, you were a personal eyewitness to the news in Utah, and that, that's really remarkable. I want to be the first to welcome you to the ranks of the retired. It's not bad. And working for KSL Bonneville, pretty sweet. Those retirement checks just keep on coming. Ladies and gentlemen, Utah Senator Orrin Hatch with a letter from the President of the United States. Well, Dick, uh, 43 years. Think about that. 
You know, I know that some people think I've been too long back in Washington, but you make me look just like a rookie is all I can say. <laughs> but I have a wonderful, uh, wonderful gift here for you, gifts for you. It's a letter from the President of the United States. Dear Dick, congratulations on your retirement after 43 years with KSL-TV. As you celebrate this milestone, I hope you will uh, take pride in your accomplishments and dedicated service. Laura and I send you our best, our best wishes for an enjoyable retirement. Sincerely, George W. Bush. And also, he's given you presidential cufflinks and a tie tack. So I think that's pretty good. Thank you, Senator. When Dick started at KSL, the newsroom staff consisted of just six people. Dick would shoot his own film, film in those days, no. type up the story while that film developed, then edit the story himself and present the story on the air. Our company and technology has changed quite a bit since then. And we've been in good hands. Please welcome Bruce Reese, president and CEO of Vonneville International, the parent company of KSL Television. Thank you very much. I'm here tonight on behalf of Bonneville and KSL to thank all of you for joining us, both those who are in the studio and those of you who are watching at home. Uh, it's difficult to imagine television in Salt Lake City without Dick Norris. Dick, I'm sure a lot of people have congratulated you on your long run in television. I just want to offer a little bit of perspective on the phrase long run. Um, particularly from a TV perspective. Who has had a more impressive stretch in television? MASH? No, MASH lasted 11 years. Gunsmoke? Legendary? It lasted 21 seasons. Dick Norse? 43 years. Ozzie and Harriet produced a record number of episodes for a sitcom at 437. Compare that with an estimate of 23,000 newscasts that Dick did. As far as live broadcasts, American Bandstand became an entertainment icon. But Dick Clark hung it up after only 32 years and just 2,000 shows. Uh, but your legacy is not best measured in simply in the length of time you served. It's the quality of the work that we will all remember. Your professionalism night after night, your compassion in the delivery of stories that were not always easy for us to hear, your calm and steady voice when others' nerves were frayed. We'll remember your courage and your candor as you talked with Salt Lake and with Utah about the cancer that you were battling. And we honor your commitment to community, the hours and hours that you spent behind the, t the scenes uh, without recognition, uh, without publicity, in the aid of too many causes us for us to talk about tonight. Dick, we value community service, and you have been an outstanding representative of KSL and Bonneville in this community. We thank you for respecting the audiences, for honoring them, for knowing how important the work that you do is. And it's our opportunity to return that honor to you tonight. Dick, thanks for everything you have done for KSL, for Bonneville, and for the community of Utah. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest of honor, Mr. Dick Norris. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Bruce, and uh, all of you, and everyone who participated. This is. All I wanted was a job 43 years ago. <laughs> I wanted to be a TV newsman. I never expected it to turn out like this in my wildest dreams or imaginations that I, that I picture this. Uh, you never know what you're going to get when you move into something. All I did was a job I, I loved to do, and, and I learned to help people who helped me through some tough times in my life. And as the governor said, you're representative of 2.7 million Utahns who for the most part, were there for me in times of turmoil in my life, facing life-threatening cancer and, and other things, the loss of a daughter, some a divorce or two here and there, and it's just been sometimes more than I could bring to work with me, but once the camera came on, I found myself in the position I guess I was supposed to be in, and I loved it. I will always love it, and I will miss it more than any one other thing I've done in life. And most of all, I'll miss those people night after night watching and pulling for me and standing beside me in the newsroom and encouraging me on. Most of all, I will miss the, the friendships that I've, I've come to, that have come to me, that have that been close to me over the years. And I'll miss the people walking down the street, and I hope they don't stop, but if they do, saying, hi, Dick, 
I feel like I know you. I watch you every night. That has kept me motivated throughout this career and has been wonderful. I've got a wonderful family here supporting me tonight, wife, my four children. As I said, I lost one daughter in April. I hope her spirit is here. My sister, my cousin, my nephews from Colorado and California are here tonight. My in-laws, and they're, they take up half the studio. <laughs> it's a big family, but I love them dearly. And, and the rest of you, thank you. Just, just thank you. I don't know what else I can say other than I love you, and I'll never forget this moment. Thanks again. Sweet was invented just for tonight. <laughs> yeah, I think we will all agree. We are going to miss this booming voice, oh, your deep you. laugh, and just having you in the newsroom. We wish you the best, and we hope you will come back and visit us often. I will. I will. I might tomorrow night. Thank you for watching Farewell Dick Norris, celebrating 43 years at KSL. Don't miss Dick's final newscast here on KSL 5 tonight at 10. Kidding. <laughs>